Will it machine? This is a question we've been asking around Carbide 3D HQ over the last few weeks. Yesterday, if you were following along on our Instagram stories, you saw another one of these efforts. The question was, could we machine cast iron? Turns out the answer is yes. Thanks for watching this video. Actually, yeah, let's continue on and give you a few more details on that. We'll start with a bit of the history of cast iron. It's an alloy of iron that contains 2-4% to carbon, along with varying amounts of silicone, manganese, and traces of impurities such as sulfur or phosphorus. Cast iron appears as early as the 6th century BC, first in China. By the 14th century, Europe was sporadically producing some cast iron. It appears in England by 1500 and the Americas in the 1600s. It was actually the very first structural metal used in early skyscrapers, eventually to be replaced by steel. Today it's known primarily for its use in cookware. This all stemmed from looking at one of our descriptions on our end mills with ZRN coating, zirconium nitride. Could you machine cast iron? It's in the list. I've never even considered, could you machine cast iron? Why would you want to machine it? What would you do with it? So, order up a pan. Get on Amazon, Amazon Basics. $32 later, you have yourself a cast iron skillet. Would I take the loge that my grandmother's been using since 1935 and go ahead and machine it the very first time? No. But I would go ahead and go on Amazon and make a $30 experiment. Let's get into the cutting, show you how it all went. We definitely had some questions coming in. Would our end mill shatter on contact? Would there be sparks? Was that a misprint on the ZRN end mill page? How close could the fire extinguisher be? Is this even a good idea? Personally, I love a full send. Don't worry about all the possible complications and problems, just start cutting. All the discussions of perfect feeds and speeds puts people off in getting involved in CNC. Feeds and speeds do not have to be perfect in order to start machining a new material. Will you break an end mill? Maybe. Mess up a cut? Probably. Who cares? Experimentation is something I hope you're up for. With that in mind, I set about coming up with some work holding. There were definitely some unknowns with the amount of force that would be generated. I tried a couple of different thoughts on securing the pan, then used my favorite work holding method, super glue and blue tape. Our super hold kit is an incredibly versatile way to secure a wide variety of odd shaped objects. I've used it for large aluminum cuts as well as for securing pieces in flip machine pockets. Definitely add it to your arsenal of work holding techniques. I started with some conservative guesses at feeds and speeds. 0.1 millimeter depth of cut, 150 millimeters for the feed. At the suggestion of Winston, I also used ramping, so it was Fusion 360. That said, if Carbide Create is your CAD weapon of choice, I believe a straight plunge at slow speed would do just fine. There were times throughout the experiment that plunging worked without issue. The first cut was a test on the handle with our 102Z 1 8 inch end mill. I was ready for anything, mostly failure. Pleasantly, I was surprised by the results. The end mill made short work of the cast iron. Those initial settings were really slow. I quickly found myself adding 10% to the speed a few times. In later cuts, I eventually went to 450 millimeters while maintaining the depth of cut at 0.1. Having air hooked up to the machine was good for cutting. It also blew the chips, more like dust, all over the place. Much of it collected in the pan itself. However, a complete wipe down of the rails in our Shapeoko Pro was needed. A quick pass with a magnet yielded significant material off the rails. So it's a good plan to wipe down your machine and the surrounding area after finishing this type of project. In terms of cutting, cast iron conducts heat well and the graphite content, as we discussed earlier, acts as a lubricant. These two features make it conducive to dry machining. This is definitely something you could explore. As far as uses go, you could make a cast iron brand. Pan art is pretty popular. Most people engrave the backsides. This will require a different and more specialized type of work holding. You can definitely customize items for yourself or for friends. Finding success with the cutting side of things, this is when it turned from will it machine to will it cook. Feeding the crew at work, always a good idea. I wanted to know if the logo would appear on different surfaces, different foods. Time to bust out the Coleman stove for breakfast and lunch. Here's the short story of what I found out. Height differences are important. I needed greater distance to create the logo effect I was hoping for. 
in the pancakes, the beginnings of those possibilities were there. Logos could definitely be achieved if I were to increase the distance between the top surface and the logo surface. I definitely think taking a second shot at it, I can make the carbide logo happen. For lunch, it was onto burgers and steaks. The logo was basically non-existent. Even a larger difference in depth in this case, I believe would not create the effect one hopes for. While putting a logo on the food didn't work out, making good food did, and that's always a win. The final summary is this. You can absolutely machine cast iron. I'm sure you can find some interesting uses for it, as mentioned earlier on the backside, or just putting an engraving in the middle for fun to personalize a pan. There's all kinds of cast iron cookware out there for you to modify and create. Get out, enjoy, show us what you made. Meantime, we'll keep asking the question, will it machine?